Okay, so what do we have here? Well, this is the law of sines, and this is one of the equations or formulas for the law of cosines. So this is a actually a pretty big topic in trigonometry, and what I'm gonna do here is just do a quick introduction or a review of both the law of sines and cosines. There's actually um, a pretty good amount you need to know about the application of these uh, laws because there's some uh, situations that are what we call ambiguous case situations, and you can basically use these laws in conjunction with one another. So I'm certainly not gonna be able to get to everything in this uh, particular video, but I'm gonna give you some suggestions on what you need to do to uh, continue to uh, practice and learn this because this is a pretty big topic, but we can certainly get the gist of the law of sines and cosines uh, from these two little example problems uh, that I'm going to do in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, let me just tell you very, very briefly about my math help program. So basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus. I would cover all this stuff in my pre-calculus course if you're just interested. But um, I also have many, many test prep courses. So if you're taking an exam and it has math on it, that would be like, let's say, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ACUPLACE, or ALEX exam, ASVAB, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam. You get the idea. So any exam that may have a math section on it, I can help you prepare. I also have a excellent homeschool learning program. So if you are homeschooling, you might want to check out my math help uh, program there. And then obviously I help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, uh, before we get into the law of sines and cosines, I must stress, if you are in fact a math student, you need to realize how important your notes are, okay? And your notes are anything less than stellar, you need to improve them, okay? I believe, just trust me on this one, I've been teaching math for decades. Um, as you improve your notes, things just magically get better. But uh, as you're doing so, you can use my notes to study from. I'm going to leave uh, links to all this stuff, uh, including my math help program, in the description of this video. Okay, so law of sines and cosines. Let's just briefly talk about when you uh, might study this. So this is part of trigonometry, and it's typically taught within, let's say, a pre-calculus course, but maybe you're taking like college algebra or algebra 2 with trigonometry. So basically that level of mathematics, you'll um, learn to solve the laws of sine and cosine. So Let's just uh, quickly talk about why we need the law of sines and cosines. So here's a basic oh, it's a sketch of a right triangle. It's pretty terrible, but let me try this again. So when you're studying basic uh, geometry, you uh, learn a lot about right triangles. Now, right triangles are extremely important. Now, the lengths of, the right, of a right triangle, we can call this AB, then the hypotenuse is C. So if I wanted to know the lengths of this um, uh, right triangle here, I could just use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Then I could also use sine, cosine, and tangent uh, to solve this right triangle. So obviously I would have to know some information, maybe some lengths of the uh, right triangle, but with uh, two lengths, knowing that it is a right triangle, I could find all the angles and all the lengths, basically with just these two things right here. Okay, knowledge of basic trigonometric ratios, and the Pythagorean theorem. Now, this isn't an excellent starting point. Matter of fact, you need to already know how to do this. But this pertains uh, only to right triangles. This is like right triangle trigonometry, right triangle situations. But guess what? We have like a lot of triangles that are not right triangles. So we have things that are like this, oblique triangles. We can have all different type of triangles that are not right. So what do we do there? How do we solve for the lengths and angles? Well, this is where the law of sines and cosines comes into play. And uh, again, like, I'm, um, like I said in my intro, that there's different kind of ambiguous situations, especially with the law of sines. It can get a little, you know, there's a lot of different factors I'm not going to cover here completely because it's just too much. And you do need to know all these little details or all these little cases, whether you're dealing with an acute uh, triangle, an obtuse triangle. So all I'm going to do is just give you a quick um, introduction to the basic application of these formulas. But um, again, as a student, you're going to need to know these cases. And if you're looking for help for all of this stuff, you definitely want to check out like my pre-calculus course. All right, let's get into it. 
and we'll start off with the law of sines. All right, so this is the law of sines, pretty straightforward. Um, a, B, and C, these little small A, B, and Cs, refer to the, uh, uh, the sides of a triangle. And then here we got sine A, sine B, sine C. Now, I'm kind of um, assuming you might have already uh, have a basic sense of what the law of sines and cosines are, because this formula here, you know, if I really wanted to, uh, to do this correctly, I would have just shown you a plain triangle with uh, sides A, B, and C. But we can kind of still interpret the law of sines here. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, let's take a look at this uh, situation. We're actually going to solve for this uh, triangle. So what do I have here? Well, I have all the angles of the triangle. Okay, so that's pretty good. Meaning I have all this information. I have the sine of A, sine of B, and sine of C. Now, you're not going to use all three of these at once. You're going to basically use a pair of these. It could be any pair you want. Then you're going to set up a proportion, and we're going to solve for one of these um, items. It could be the angle. It could be the side. So you got a lot of different options here. But in this case, we have all the angles of this triangle. But I only have one side. Okay, I have this side of this triangle. So I'm going to uh, use the law of uh, sines to get one of these sides. Okay, so we can get a side A or side C, and we're going to just basically set up a proportion. Okay, so let's just see how this is going to work. So look at side B, and here's angle B. Okay, that's going to be 28. So right here, this B, okay, is going to be 27. Okay, and then sine of B will be sine of 20, uh, 28 degrees. Okay, you also want to make sure if you're going to follow along with me that your calculator is in degree mode. Now, I have all kinds of choices. I can solve for A or C, and uh, again, I have these angles. But let me show you exactly this setup here. Okay, so again, we're going to pick two. I'm going to actually solve. I'm going to use these pairs, okay, A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. Again, these are all equivalent to one another, but let's see how this works. And let's go ahead and set this up. All right, so here, A, I'm, look, I'm going to solve for this length of the triangle. Okay, so I'm solving for A. Okay, so A, we don't know. A over sine of A. So remember, that's the opposite. So here's angle A. Its side is over here, so that's going to be A over sine 50. And then, of course, we already have uh, this um, uh, ratio right here, okay? B and angle B. We have that information, so we're going to use that. That's going to be 27 over uh, sine of 28. So here you can see I have a nice little proportion, and I can solve for A by simply just using the cross product, okay? So I can go this way. A times sine of 28 degrees, that'll be that. And that's going to be equal to sine 50 times 27. So 27 times sine 50. So to solve for A, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by sine 28 degrees. And I'm kind of squeezing it in there, but I already wrote it out. And there it is right here. So 27 uh, times sine of 50 degrees divided by sine of 28 degrees. Now you got to be careful when you plug this into your calculator. Again, you got to make sure you're in degree mode, but you get approximately 44.06. Okay, so A is 44.06 approximately, and that is the length of the of this uh, leg of the triangle. Okay, so this is how this works. Now you have that. Again, what was that? Uh, 44.06. 44.06. Now I can do the same thing, set up a, uh, the same situation to solve for length C by using the law of sines. Okay. Now again, I'm stressing here, there is um, some other additional factors you need, you need to consider. There's something called the ambiguous case, and it could be a little bit confusing, but I'm not going to get into that because that would just make this video way, way too long. And you're going to have to, uh, um, you know, really practice a variety of different problems, not only with the law of sines, separately with the law of cosines, and then you use them in conjunction with uh, one another. But let's go ahead and take a look at the law of cosines. So that was the law of sines. Hopefully you get the gist of it. And if you understand that, that's, you know, pretty good um, introduction to the law of sines. Okay, so the law of cosines, here is uh, one formula for it. 
But with this formula, I can, um, there's all different kind of versions of the law of cosines. They're equivalent, okay? So here's one, okay, uh, version of it. And here is another, cosine b is equal to a squared plus c squared minus b squared over 2ac. And there's, there's multiple versions, okay, of the law of cosines. Again, they're all equivalent, but, um, you know, you want to pick the one, uh, the version that is applicable to your problem. Okay, so how does this differ? Well, the law of cosines is kind of, if you look at it, you can see here we have a squared equals b squared and c squared. It kind of reminds us of the Pythagorean theorem. Matter of fact, it is kind of a, a version of the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared. Um, here, we'll just write it out. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Matter of fact, the law of cosines or the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, you could argue, is one is derived from the other. But let's go ahead and see how this plays out. Okay, so here in this particular problem, whoops, I don't want to show you the solution just quite yet. So if we're looking at this, what's this scenario? Well, the scenario is I have a triangle. I have all the lengths of a triangle, but I don't have any angles. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to use the law of sines because the law of sines, remember, is like A over sine A. So here... It's not a good situation for the law of sines. I don't have any angles yet. But if I can get one angle, then I could start using the law of sines. But to get one angle, um, you know, the law of sines is not going to be able to help me out. Okay, so what I'm going to need is the law of cosines. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and see how we're going to solve for uh, cosine B. So let's go for uh, this angle first. Now, when you're using the law of of cosines, you always want to go for the biggest angle. Now, if you notice here, the largest side is B. Okay, that's 19. This is 14. And this uh, side A is 8. So this will be the largest angle. Again, there's a lot of subtleties here uh, in situations. you got to know there's got to be a particular way how you solve these uh, angles. You can get in trouble. Okay, so when you're using the law of uh, cosines, you want to go for the biggest angle which is gonna be opposite the largest side. So that's why I'm gonna start with angle B. So I'm going to use this version of the law of cosines formula. So it's cosine B is equal to A squared plus C squared minus B squared over two AC. Again, these are all the lengths of this side. So let's go ahead and just uh, plug in our values. So A squared is gonna be eight squared, pretty straightforward, plus C squared is 14 squared minus b squared, which of course is 19 squared over two times a, which is eight times c. I'm gonna do this part of the formula, which is 14. Okay, so when I do all this number crunching, I'm gonna get uh, what cosine b is equivalent to. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so cosine b, when you do this, you gotta be very, very careful, obviously, with uh, putting all this stuff into your calculator, you get negative 0.451. So cosine B is approximately negative 0.451. Now I can find the arc cosine. So angle B is going to be equal to the arc cosine of uh, negative 0.451. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode or you uh, will get the, well, you'll get the answer in radians, but you're probably looking at, uh, for the answer in degrees, but we get approximately 116.8 degrees. Okay, so that is what angle B is. Okay, so angle B is 116. Now I got this little setup right here. Okay, so I can go B over sine B. All right, so B is length B. So that'll be 19 over sine of 116.8 degrees. Now I do have enough information to start uh, incorporating the law of sines, but the law of sines and cosines, and this is basically a, you know, a, a quick introduction, okay, to the law of sines. But the, you know, I don't want you to um, get overconfident with the law of, of law of sines and cosines. I think a lot of students they'll learn this, they'll be like, okay, I know, you know, the basic sense of it, all right, and they, and they do. They'll be like, okay, I know, you know, why we need we need them and how to apply the formula, generally speaking. However, okay, and I know I'm kind of being redundant, but that's okay. I really just want to make sure you understand this. 
that there are these ambiguous situations and there is a, a method where you got to be very, very careful um, or you will get the wrong answer, even if you're, you think you're applying these formulas correctly. But the law of sines and cosines, super powerful stuff, and the definitely, definitely a must-know um, as um, you, stu like you study trigonometry. Okay, So this is not one of these things that you can kind of like eh, ignore. I'm pretty sure your teacher is going to really you know, test you pretty thoroughly and are not going to give you these questions, uh, they'll give you some questions where you can kind of not know what you're doing and still get the right answer, but there's going to be questions in there where you're going to have to know these ambiguous cases, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so hopefully this video helps you out in some tiny, small way, and if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. Of course, there's a little bit more on the advanced side, but hopefully you'll subscribe, get a ton of content on my channel, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.